Japanese barberry, controlling this public health risk. Produced in cooperation with the University of Connecticut Extension System and the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station. Japanese barberry is considered an invasive species. It gets this honor because of its ability to completely take over an area, outcompeting all native plants. In addition to being invasive, which is bad enough, Japanese barberry has also been found to be an excellent habitat for the deer tick, the same tick that spreads Lyme disease. This three-part video series was developed to give you the information you need to effectively manage this plant and to reduce your risk of contracting the Lyme disease. This first video in this series explains the Japanese barberry plant in detail. It shows you how to positively identify it, how it grows and spreads, its link to Lyme disease, and the other problems it causes in the forest environment. The second video covers ways to control this invasive, such as by using a torch or herbicides. And the third video in this series focuses in depth on the Lyme disease itself, what it is, how it's spread, its symptoms and treatments, and the deer tick's role in spreading the disease. This information, mixed in with many handy tips, will help keep you Lyme disease free. We hope you enjoy this video series. We'll start with Mr. Thomas Worthley of the Yukon Cooperative Extension Service explaining how to identify the barberry plant. Uh, barberry is a perennial plant with a semi-woody stem or a clump of stems that uh, all originate at a, at a similar location. If you cut a piece off, um, you can see that the, uh, the inner part of the stem is kind of a bright yellow color and uh, in its woody uh, uh, consistency makes it kind of tough to cut. Um, the branch is loaded with thorns. The thorns are developed in the axles of the, of the leaves. The new growth is a green color, and then it hardens off, uh, and the second year growth uh, develops uh, additional clusters of these ovate-shaped leaves. Um, they leaf out very early in the spring. It's one of the earliest plants to leaf out, and uh, it develops multiple stems or ramets from, an, from one uh, root location at, at the base of the plant. Here's a shot of the, uh, the base of the barberry plant showing the multiple stems that can come from one, uh, one root collar and uh, uh, as time grows on the number of stems multiplies in the, from that one spot. Uh, Jeff also can show you a, uh, a place where the, uh, the barberry has uh, uh, reached over with one of its branches and attached itself to the ground with uh, new roots uh, in a process called layering, which would actually create a new plant uh, at that location. Well, our work and work of others has found that Japanese barberry has a number of problems. Um, the first problem is, is an increased risk of Lyme disease. Like a lot of other scientific discoveries, the tick component to this research project came around by accident. When we were doing the original control studies in the Japanese barberry infestations, we noticed we were getting a lot of ticks on our bodies. Uh, that led to an increased sampling effort over the past five years where we sampled ticks in barberry infestations, where we controlled barberry and where barberry wasn't growing. And we found that in intact infestations such as this one, there are approximately 122 ticks per acre infected with the Lyme disease causing spirochete Borrelia burgdorferi. And in areas where we controlled it, knocked this all back, that number drops to about 30 ticks per acre infected with the spirochete. And where barberry doesn't grow, it's only about 10 ticks per acre infected with the spirochete. So given these results, it's kind of interesting that an invasive plant from Japan, Japanese barberry, that's taking over the forests of Connecticut and the Northeast, is indirectly having a negative effect on the health of residents of Connecticut and and the Northeast by harboring ticks with the Lyme disease causing spirochete. When we moved here in 1987, we had never even thought of the concept of invasive plants. We knew we had a lot of barberry. We have about 40 acres that look like this. And I didn't really like the stuff. I came back from the woods a lot of times with my legs all scratched up. But I had never even thought of the connection with um, between barberry and all the Lyme disease we were getting. One month, my husband and I and all three of our dogs were being treated for Lyme disease at the same time. I realized I had lost track of how many times I had Lyme disease when I couldn't remember whether I'd had it six or seven times, and I've had it several times since then. 
And about five years ago, our dogs started coming down with another tick-related illness called anaplasmosis. So I asked my doctor to test me for that the next time I felt the familiar aches. And I've been diagnosed with that twice. So when we found out that people with a lot of bar barberry around a lot of bar barberry were likely to, more likely to get Lyme disease, I was a believer very quickly. One of the other problems with barberry is we don't have any native shrubs coming up. We don't have new tree seedlings to replace the older trees when they gradually fall apart and die. We don't have spring wildflowers out here because the barberry is, is just out competing them. It's shading them out. And the other big problem that we've seen with barberry is an area with barberry, we don't have very much leaf litter. I just grabbed a, a handful and now I'm on bare dirt. Leaf litter are the leaves that are decaying on the ground and these leaves act like a blanket protecting the soil from uh, soil erosion. And in some areas with barberry, we actually have sheet erosion and gully formation. And we're not sure if, which is first, uh, the chicken or the egg, but in areas with barberry, there's much higher earthworm densities. And these earthworms are actually are consuming, consuming all the leaves that compose the litter layer, taking away that protective cover of the forest soils. One of the concerns we have with uh, certain invasive species that occur in forest land is that they're uh, tolerant of shade. They, they photosynthesize very effectively, even in, in partial shade. They leaf out earlier in the spring than all the other trees, and so they have a competitive advantage. And they can take over a site like this barberry has done here. There's a few other species that can do that too. And so in forested settings, where we're interested in native vegetation and biodiversity, uh, for the balance of nature, uh, plants like this that take over an entire site can be a real issue, and um, uh, controlling them can be a real challenge. Now that you have seen the damage that Japanese barberry can do, watch our second video, Controlling Barberry, for information on how to safely and effectively manage this invasive plant on your property. Thanks for watching.